So the same thing always happens when a new device launches. The media gets review units ahead of the official launch and we get to use them while we write our review. Then the press embargo lifts, every outlet posts their reviews and videos at the same time, writers and commenters go back and forth, and it's a huge frenzy of opinion and buzz for about a day. And then it all goes away. Sure, there's some follow-up coverage, but after that initial blast, almost no one revisits the device to see how well it's aged. Because we're all on to the next big thing already. So, let's do something about it. Let's have a look at a device a couple weeks after release and when it's not shiny and new anymore. I'm Taylor Martin with Pocket Now. This is the Google Nexus 4, and this is episode 15 of After the Buzz. The Nexus 4 by LG, the fourth iteration of a pure Google handset, is now over four months old. How's it holding up in terms of hardware, software, and performance? About as good as you could expect from any $350 phone. The day it was finally unveiled, we were all surprised a bit. Face on, it looks almost identical to the previous year's Galaxy Nexus by Samsung. The face has a similar, buttonless, all-black glass slab, but the chrome trim around the outside of the bezel is where the similarities between it and the Galaxy Nexus end, at least in terms of design. The soft-touch plastic around the edges lend the device a nice, grippy feel, and the speckled glass around back makes LG's Nexus feel much more premium than the last. Over the course of two months, the Nexus has held up quite well. The majority of the time, it has been used without a case, and the only signs of wear are barely visible micro-scratches in the chrome trim. Granted, the day I received it, I slapped a carbon fiber skin on the back to cover the all-too-fragile glass. Our own Joe Levi had much worse luck with his first Nexus 4 unit, which met its unfortunate and abrupt end when it came face-to-face -face with the concrete floor. In terms of specifications, the Nexus 4 was never in the top of its class. Its chipset, the quad-core Snapdragon S4 Pro, was always snappy, and over time it has served us well with few to no hiccups in performance. But the storage on the Nexus 4 is as big a problem as ever. Unlike the Nexus 7, Google has yet to introduce a larger capacity model, so the Nexus 4 owners are limited to 8 or 16 gigabytes of storage. When you consider the standard is slowly rising to 32 or 64 gigabytes, and game and movie file sizes are growing exponentially to take advantage of high resolution displays, Storage is getting notably tighter over time, and no option to expand is a problem that will respectively grow over time. The one area the Nexus 4 has certainly lost its luster, however, is in its display. At 4.7 inches, the Nexus 4 display was never among the largest, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but its on-screen navigational keys also take from size just ever so slightly, and is stuck with a resolution of 1280 by 768 pixels, while most of the high-end Android handsets of 2013 equip 5-inch 1080p panels. The resolution isn't necessarily the problem though. A rating of 318 pixels per inch should definitely suffice, but the panel appears washed out and dull alongside newer, higher-resolution SLCD3 and Super AMOLED panels. The Nexus 4 display was never a highlight feature, but it's slowly turning into a sore point. Although the hardware of the Nexus 4 is relatively premium, especially considering its price tag, being a purely stock Android device means the software is where the Nexus 4 truly shines. It is guaranteed to be among the first devices to get any updates straight from Google. Since February, the Nexus 4 received an update, taking it from 4.2.1 to 4.2.2, a minor point update that still boasted some nice additions and bug fixes. And the ecosystem is on an upswing, more and more applications are undergoing drastic redesigns that give them the fit and finish to rival their iOS counterparts. Unlike many of its Android competitors, which feature proprietary interfaces put in place by manufacturers, the Nexus 4 can utilize the raw power of Project Butter, meaning it's not subject to many slowdowns and performance problems. This results in a much more smooth and polished experience that you don't necessarily get on many other Android devices. While the Nexus 4 may only incorporate last year's processor technology from Qualcomm, the S4 Pro has plenty of horsepower to muscle through most situations. It handles gaming like a charm, and it cuts through everyday tasks like butter. The downside of the Nexus 4, however, is that it does not have any carrier endorsements, and not all the right parts, meaning it has no official access to LTE. Users are stuck on HSPA+, serious compromise for some, but for us, the HSPA Plus speeds on AT&T in the Charlotte metro area have been passable. And stamina? It may not host a monster battery like the Droid Razor Max HD or the Galaxy Note 2, but the Nexus 4's 2100 mAh battery is enough to keep the device running most of the day. 
But occasionally, on days of heavy usage, you might consider keeping a spare charger around, just in case. So after four long months and at least a dozen flagships later, is the Nexus 4 still worth the buy? For the bargain seeker, absolutely. For anyone after the purest Google experience in a smartphone, definitely. But with Google I.O. just around the corner and a host of more powerful, more advanced smartphones with 1080p displays on the horizon, the Nexus 4 has passed its prime, and we couldn't recommend it to anyone who seeks bleeding edge technology or needs the latest and greatest. So that's all we've got for episode 15 of After the Buzz. Be sure to give the video a thumbs up if you liked what you saw and subscribe to the channel. You can also find us on all your favorite social networks, Twitter, Google Plus, and Facebook at Simply Pocket Now. I'm Taylor Martin, and I will see you next time. For episode 15 of After the Buzz, let... So that's all we've got for epi episode 15 of After the Buzz. Be sure to give the video... Wow, really? <sighs> So that's all we've got for episode 15 of After the Buzz. Be sure to give the video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe to the channel. Be God. Networks at Simply Pocket Now. Google Plus. Google Plus. Google Plus. Google Plus. Really? <laughs> that's all we've got. So that. I'm hungry.